In today's video, I want to discuss popular threats that companies use as a psychological weapon to make their workforce come back to offices. Before jumping to the gist of this video, I want to show you a viral post that would add the tone to the video, which reads, my boss once asked me to choose between work and family, and I chose a different boss. If you agree with this statement, like and sub the channel. The great resignation, which began in the United States, quickly spread to other parts of the world and even countries like Japan and China, where work culture is ingrained in people's DNA were not immune to this resignation wave, making the great resignation truly pandemic. Due to employers' inflexible working conditions and a cumulative effect from a toxic and unfair working environment, a record number of quits began and continued throughout many months of 2020, peaking in November 2021 with more than 4.5 million people still quitting their jobs, and this is almost the end of the last year. BLS calculated that more than 7 million open positions were available in 2020, and more than 11 million open positions available in 2021, respectively. This is an increase of 57% if you compare just 12 months in between, and that's really crazy. Looking at all these statistics, I believe that the future of remote work is bright, but nothing comes easily, and there is a minor issue to ensure that corporations and legislators give it a fair chance to thrive in the future. The majority of CEOs and corporate managers who run their businesses don't support remote work, which is why it's so kind of controversial. And it's going all over the world, not just in America. The problem number one of why remote work is so highly debatable is because if we pay attention to CEOs' backgrounds and the time that they started building their careers, this all may help us understand the reasoning behind those acts. So their careers were built when face-to-face -face interactions were the only way to get work done by showing charisma, by showing wit and charm, and the power of influencing others during meetings and so on. This was all present during their times, and this is how the majority of managers and CEOs got their positions. The second problem is that there are continuous speculations and threats from the same CEOs and managers that if employees don't show up physically at work, there will be no or few job promotions and there is no guarantee of fair career growth opportunities as a result. This, in my view, shows that the leadership is enabled to develop better tools for evaluating people's performance and contributions. And also corporate leaders keep failing to recognize that businesses are not solely based on threats and punishments. The third reason why remote work is so contentious is that there is a growing fear among employees that technology and outsourcing jobs overseas will imply the end of their career opportunities. Just because jobs migrate to robots and geographical locations doesn't mean that no jobs were created or, or, or will be created and people will remain without jobs. Sadly, YouTubers contribute to this speculation by mentioning the growing popularity of freelance platforms where you can find anyone for any budget to do the work for you. While it's true that freelance platforms are becoming more popular today, let's not forget about compliance and quality control standards, the laws, restrictions, as well as the fact that large to medium-sized businesses care about keeping their processes as smooth as possible, with no drain of ideas, with no risk of succession planning. It's not doable if you work with freelancers and consultants. It's just a different type of business that many corporations are just not fit to this types of business models. Another ridiculous argument I recently heard was that managers forget about remote employees. Yes, it appears that some managers do struggle to remember who is on their teams and what are the responsibilities of those remote employees. So I'd like to propose a solution to that problem. If the company can afford any decent software to track employees' results and review their performances, it will be easier to remember who is on your team and 
what they're doing. So let's now discuss one of the major impediments to remote work, and this is a real problem, which is taxation. Taxation seems complicated, which should not be in reality, but put it simple, approximately 95% of all remote jobs today require employees to be based in a specific location. To further complicate tax issues, there is a convenience rule that can obligate employees to pay income taxes based on their location of their employer, potentially resulting in double taxation. Tax regulations seem the only complication to let remote workers stay where they are. And I'm not convinced with any other excuses to bring people back to offices again. So big tech CEOs may say that innovation doesn't happen remotely. And I feel like it's possible. If the company creates more R&D departments, hires more people creating absolutely new jobs, or assign a day, a week, where people can come up with their innovative solutions. And thankfully, I'm not alone in this thinking, and another big tech CEO thinks the same, just like me. Of course, there are other international legal and tax implications. If you move out of the country to work remotely, dealing with multiple time zones or coming up with salary adjustments, which I think is absurd too, because you need to pay for the work, not for the cheaper cost of living. That's why compensation structures are getting a little bit behind the realities and real needs of the people. And I hope that fair compensation will prevail in the near future. If this video was helpful or added some thoughts that are worth thinking about in the future, please like the video, sub the channel, and thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.